Hello, this is Coffee Guy Jake, the internet's least known home barista, and today I'll be showing you how to make cold brew coffee. Originally, I was going to show you how to make pour over coffee as a follow up to the previous video, but I figured I'd show you how to make cold brew instead because today is my son's birthday. Uh, my fiance and I were going to take my son on a picnic today, seeing as the weather has been warm all week. However, it started snowing today and the picnic fell through. We still drink the cold brew, but there's a bunch of planned clips that did not end up getting recorded, so hopefully this video is still a good length. <laughs> now, you can make cold brew in any vessel you want to. You can use jars like these. If you're using jars and you're putting them in the fridge or leaving them out at room temp for the brew, I would suggest having something that has a uh, tight top like these with a little silicone ring. But you can also use a French press, which is what I'm going to use since I'm brewing enough for two people to drink. Uh, the jars I have on hand just aren't quite big enough, and I don't want to split the brew up into two vessels. Now the French press, you know, it's glass beaker, mesh metal, filter. Again, nothing too crazy. Now cold brew is pretty easy to make. Uh, you are just putting ground coffee in some water and letting it set in the fridge or at room temp for about, you know, 10 to up to even like 20 hours, depending on how you're brewing it. I'd say there's no real wrong or right way to make it, but I'm just going to show you my recipe, at least what I'm working with today. All of the tips I gave you on coffee choice the last time still apply this time. You can use pre-ground grocery store coffee if you want to, but... Whole bean coffee, uh, especially specialty whole bean coffee, will work best. It'll just taste better. Now today I'll be using Red Rooster's Kingfisher Espresso Blend Coffee. The reason I'm using this one instead of the Old Crow is purely because I don't have enough of the Old Crow to make two cups worth. But again, you can use whatever coffee you want. Now rather than using the Golden Ratio, we're going to be using a much closer ratio of coffee to water. Uh, today I'm using something closer to like a one to six or one to seven ratio, because cold brew tends to be a little bit more concentrated. Uh, you can use whatever ratio you want. Uh, one to 16 would be closer to right off the bat drinkable. But if you want it a little bit stronger or you want to be able to dilute it, I would recommend going with those smaller ratios. So today, I am using about 67 grams of coffee, and it's going to come out to about 400 grams of water that I'm going to be using in this. Again, I'm using the Ross Droplet technique to prevent static and run tension in my grinder. I will do a video talking more on that later on. But for now, that's all the explanation needed there. That is if you are going to be grinding your coffee. Now again, the grind size you're going to want is about what you'd use for drip. Uh, that coffee is going to be in the water for a while, so you want to slow down the process of extraction. Uh, you go too fine and you're going to have a heavily over-extracted cup and it's just not going to taste as great. Now you can use cold water if you need to delay the brew. Uh, I'm using water that is a little bit warmer. Uh, I've seen other techniques where people use hot water to bloom their coffee initially before they pour the rest of the cooler water in. It's kind of up to you. It's a pretty versatile brew method. Very open to experimentation. So, as you see here, I'm pouring in about 400 grams of water. And now I'm going to stir vigorously. I want to make sure all that coffee is mixed in. Since the water is a little bit cooler, it's going to have a hard time mixing in. You want water in contact with every single bit of that coffee there. That way it properly extracts. Now I'm going to put this press down. And I'm going to leave it out at room temp because I need it to brew a little bit faster than a, a uh, fridge cold brew coffee would brew. But yeah, I'll see you in about 10 hours, 10 to 12. Um, in that amount of time, the coffee should have sunk from the top down to the bottom. And I'm going to actually filter that coffee through a paper filter using my pour over. Because though most of the bigger grounds have sunken down, the fines still kind of stay up in the solution. All right, as you can see here, well, maybe not, but the coffee has sunk down into the bottom, so we shouldn't have too many grounds at the top. 
And if you're fine with a little bit of salt that's left in there, you can just gently pour this off into a cup and drink it as is. But as you see here, I am going to filter it because I prefer my cup to come out a little bit cleaner. Now there is a brew method that produces a similar cup that is more optimal for a clean cup of coffee. And that's a flash brew coffee. And I might have to do a video on that one later on as well. Now I'm just gonna rinse the filter here. I don't want too much of the paper taste. And I do believe rinsing it helps the coffee pass through a little bit easier. And not as much of the liquid coffee has to soak up into the filter to allow it through. This also gives me a good chance to kind of rinse out the brewer just in case there's any dust or anything in there. All right, I'm just gently pouring this in because I am still trying to reduce the amount of silt that comes through. That way the filter doesn't work, work as hard. Now regardless, it's gonna take some time since it is cool in temperature and doesn't pass through as easy. And here we are, it's filtered. Now uh, from this point, you can just serve it out. Uh, you can drink it straight, might be a little bit strong to do so. So you can add some ice, add some cold water, milk, sweeten it, whatever you wanna do, whatever you want from your cold brew. All fair game from here. Uh, cold brew is great with flavors or without, similar to espresso in that regard. Uh, though I wouldn't necessarily call it espresso adjacent. It is quite a strong cup of coffee. So it's great with lots of different things. Uh, because the flavor of the coffee still comes through past any flavors or additives you add to this. But it produces a smooth, refreshing drink. You can add it to smoothies, juices, whatever you want to do with it. Just keep in mind the flavor profile of your coffee before you add it to anything or add anything to it, just to make sure you are going to like the flavor combination. Like a fruit forward coffee, you may want to use for a smoothie. Honestly, the possibilities are endless and you can use that cold brew for pretty much anything you want. Um, thank you for watching the video. Uh, I am sorry for the slight delays. I should have done it posted earlier. And this video was going going to be longer with uh, more uh, related clips in it. But uh, like I said earlier in the video, some things fell through, but that's okay. Uh, I think we still got a decent video out of it. Um, it was a little bit hard coming up with a coherent line of explanation since cold brew is such a clear cut and less involved uh, brew method because at the end of the day, putting some coffee and water together and letting it sit for half a day and then you're drinking it. But hopefully the explanation was enough, and hopefully there wasn't too much unnecessary stuff in there that would make it more daunting for a beginner, for it or for anybody. Um, and I'll be trying to make more of these videos a little bit more often. I'll try once a week. I'm gonna try that out for a bit, and hopefully the video quality will improve as time goes on. I'm a little bit new to the long-form content thing, especially with something like this. I'm a little bit more used to doing much shorter content, uh, less involved explanations of things. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this um, more down to earth explanation of things. Um, I feel like a lot of other copy content creators though are really good at explaining these things. will miss the mark a little bit there. I try to cut out as much extra explanation or extra techniques as possible and give you the bare bones uh, techniques that are easy to understand and easy to apply when you're just a beginner. Just starting out and letting you go from there and experiment more and have your fun with the coffee without too many people telling you what you should be doing. Um, but yeah, um, Please give me some feedback. If there's any improvements I can make, please let me know. And if there's any videos you would like me to make, giving explanations of things or just showing things to you, please do. Um, the next video I'll make will probably be the pour over video. And then after that, flash brew, since I mentioned both. And the pour over was originally gonna be my next video, but flash brew is prevalent to this video. And, uh, 
as I make more videos, I'll try to make playlists. That way there's something comprehensive to look at when you're looking at all your uh, beginner brew options. Um, while I'm working on these long form videos, I haven't jumped back into the short form yet. Uh, I'm still gonna be doing those. Um, I just kinda have to figure out how I'm gonna work that in and what sort of schedule I'm gonna follow with that. But I thank you very much for uh, all the viewership I had on the last video and hopefully this video. Um, but yeah, I just love talking about coffee and hopefully I don't come off as uh, arrogant or snobbish in these videos. Um, two other things I'd like to address. Uh, apologies for some of the audio clips. My son was still awake. He was working on going to sleep. He likes to kick at his crib as he's going to sleep. So you hear him babbling and him kicking at the wall in the crib in some of those clips. Uh, you can hear the heater I've got in this room because it, again, it got pretty cold all of a sudden. And I think you can hear my neighbor's dog in those clips. Uh, hopefully the music can kind of cover it up a little bit, but if not, I'm sorry for that. But hey, at least I remembered to put this in landscape this time. If it seems like some of my words are a little bit slurred, or at the very least not very clear, like they're not enunciated super well, uh, I do have a little bit of trouble talking clearly right now because I'm getting my teeth worked on, having some extensive work done. So you're going to hear that a little bit uh, in these early stages as time goes on I get more work done. Uh, my speaking should improve again. So just bear with me. But yeah, if you want to see like the shorts content or more content like this or just see everyday little photos and videos or just whatever I'm sharing, uh, check me out on Facebook and Instagram. I occasionally post things to TikTok, but not super often. I'm not huge on the platform. I don't, I don't like it a lot. Uh, and I just really don't want to bother with uh, how I have to format videos as much on their platform. But um, just check my stuff out uh, by the same name, Coffee Guy Jake. Uh, I think my Instagram handle has underscores, but you can find that in the description down below. And I do believe I have my GoFundMe and my Patreon linked as well. Both should still be active. Um, if you donate to those, uh, one goes towards me eventually starting a coffee truck while the other goes towards this general funding of this channel and helping me improve with like filming equipment, mics, whatever. But yeah, um, see you guys. Stay caffeinated. Thanks for watching, and for more content like this, check the description down below and comment what your favorite drink is. And as always, stay caffeinated.